so hello. Uh, yeah, there's been some changes, and I am currently in the midst of interviewing for a position for academic advisor at my local university. Do whatever you do. So, as you guys don't know, I'm not returning back to the classroom, so um, I've been in this zone for quite a while of not wanting to return to the classroom. And it's just been, it's been one of those things where I'm constantly dreading going to school every day. And I've been looking for something else. I happened to check my local university and they had an academic advisor position available. I looked into it and I thought it was something that I could really do and I think it has some of those values that are involved in in education that people really like. Like I love the building relationships and rapport with people. I love the helping people grow and succeed, all that kind of fun stuff. And so I applied and I was not expecting a quick response. Um, currently it is uh, April 2nd. So I applied about a week ago for the position. I got a call to do an initial interview. It was through Zoom and I just like, Got all dressed up for the top up. I did the interview, it was pretty short, it was about 15 minutes. They told me that it was gonna be about a week to two weeks before I would hear back if I was picked for the next round of interviews. I wanna say that was Monday of last week. Then I got a call on, I wanna say it was Wednesday night? Yes, it was Wednesday night I got a call that was like, we wanna have you come in for your next round of interviews. The interviews are crazy. I meet with the advising team, then I meet with the search committee team, then I meet with HR, then I go back and meet with the director of student advising. So it's like, I have a lot of interviews, like they're all like boom, 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 boom. I'm off to my interview, you guys. Oh my god, I'm so scared. <laughs> but I'll be okay. I know I'll be fine. It's not a big deal. Um, it is now 8.30. I don't have to be there until 9. But I wanted to make sure I can get parking. And I wanted some time to kind of go over my questions and my answers. Okay, so this building here is the art building. This one that's right here is the music building. Way back there, the building that has like the white uh, roof area is the Memorial Union. And that's where they have like all of like your Starbucks, they have the bookstore and everything's in there. And then the building I'm going to, which you can't really see very well, but it is like right over there. You can kind of see through the trees if you're looking hard enough. That was exhausting, you guys. I felt like it went really well. Um, they said I will know back in about a week, so we'll see how that turns out. Just to share, I did not get the job. They didn't ever tell me why I didn't get it. They just sent me a lovely little, lovely little email that was like, sorry, we went with somebody else. But I've been applying for tons of jobs and um, just trying to get something going here. And I was gonna show you guys, I was gonna show you how many jobs I've applied for so far. And this is my notion board that I have, and I have all the jobs that I've applied for, and these are all the ones that I've been rejected from, as you can see here. Um, and I just applied for this one here, which it's for an education coordinator. I just applied for it today, and they wrote me back and told me I was ready to move on to the next step. And I was super excited because as you can see, I was getting a lot of rejections and it was getting frustrated. So with this one here, I have an introduction I have to do, so I'll probably say something like, uh, my name is Jeremy, I am a currently an educator in the classroom. I'm wanting to leave for yada, yada, yada. And then um, the next one is, who is someone in your, who is someone you admire and why? So um, the other one is, what is something you have achieved in your life that you are proud of and why? And then I email it over and then I'll keep you guys posted on what's happening with this, so. Um, so far, job outlooks have been really slim, but I really don't want to return to the classroom at all, so I'm hoping that something happens quickly, because I'm ready. My name is 
Jeremy. I am currently an elementary teacher. I've been now because like I have officially like resigned from my position. I am starting my new job on January 2nd. So uh, by the time this comes up I'm pretty sure I'll probably be already in my new position just because that's what I'm planning on releasing this video. So let's see here. So I end up getting a position as a training manager at a local like wellness and behavior uh, mental health and wellness place. Um, I ended up, I actually was applying for a different role there and I did that kind of right at the very beginning of the school year, hoping that it wasn't going to like, I was gonna find out something before school started and everything, but it didn't happen that way. Um, and so I applied for the position, never heard back, and then, or not never heard back, but I didn't hear back for a really long time. And then I got a call, let me see when was that? Okay, yeah. So it must have been sometime in the middle of October, so, or around the beginning of October. Um, I got a call for another role, which was the training manager, because I originally applied for HR assistant role. And then they called me back and wanted to interview me for their training manager position that I have coming, coming available. It's a brand new role. Um, they're just kind of taking like training from all the other departments and putting it all into one, consolidating it. So that'll be what I'm in charge of. A little scary, but um, I'll do a video of like my first day and all that stuff. I think I'm going to do, but... Then on, so that was on October 18th, and I interviewed, and then they said it was gonna be about two weeks, and I felt like the interview went super well, whatever, and I didn't record it because I didn't think anything was gonna happen because I had been having interviews and, or just getting rejections constantly. So it was like, I didn't record it because I was like, it's probably not gonna happen. Um, but I felt like the interview went really well. It was about two weeks later, I ended up getting an email stating that they wanted to offer me the position. And so I went ahead and accepted it. But one of my biggest things with it, which is funny that I'm working for a mental health and behavior like clinic or place, um, because one of the reasons, like the big reasons I'm leaving education, besides, it's always been something I've been kind of thinking about leaving and my goal was never to really stay in the classroom but then I was kind of naive thinking that I was going to get some reading specialist role or something you know and it's like some schools have those like we have one at our school but it's like it's like yes they do reading specialist stuff but they also are substitute teachers and they have to fill in for people and it's all this huge mess so I didn't really want to do something like that uh, but a lot of the other roles are getting taken away now. They're like kind of removing those roles and putting them into the classroom again. So because there is a teacher shortage and I'm adding to it. And I know probably some of you are going to be probably not liking the fact that I am leaving. Um, it's kind of a, it's a weird mix of people. Like where there's people that totally get it. They accept it. It's whatever. But then those people that are not that way. Like they, they think that you should be diehard. Like, and then maybe even finish out the year. I didn't finish out the year. But I'll get to all that in a minute too, but it's just funny that I was working for a mental health place or I'm getting getting ready to start a job at a mental health place. And uh, that was one of the major problems. Uh, my mental health was going down big time. And it was the summertime. And as you can tell, I mean, I think over time you can kind of tell that I wasn't really enjoying teaching that much anymore. Even though I tried to like power through, I was like, yes, I can do this, I can do this. I just kind of returned to the classroom. I was having panic attacks over the summertime. And it, it just got really bad. And I was depressed. Um, I was just, it was just not good. So, and I was just stressed all the time and everything. You know, and I knew that, like, I knew I was going to be getting kindergarten this next year. And I was trying to make that work. And I really want to be excited about it. I did not like it. It was not my thing. And that's when I decided I think it's just time to go. So I had tried, I mean, I moved districts. And which was... I had to do because I was I was relocating to a new state, but it was still like I was kind of hoping that that would help it. And then I tried different roles, um, different grade levels, and I don't I, I just don't I wasn't in it on any of them. So I think I just lost it all, and it 
I just couldn't do it anymore. And I didn't think it was fair to the kids that I continued doing this every day because I was exhausted. And I did. I dreaded going to work every day. I wanted to finish out the school year. That was my whole, like, I never really wanted to leave in the middle of the school year, but a position came, the position came available. I took it. And I, that was one of my big stipulations was that I want to at least go to winter break. I want to leave at winter break. So that way there's like a nice transition period. I told them that. I said, you know, one of my big things is I would like to finish up the year. Also, I don't want to mess up my interns, my, super, my um, student teachers, like, um, thing that she is going because I mean not only it's my decision affecting me it's also affecting other people and so it was a lot I had a way on in on and everything but I ultimately just decided to do that let me tell you that was the most nerve-wracking time when I had found out and I knew that I was going to resign and I didn't know how to properly do that and so I talked to my our uh, union rep and they were very an our union, our union lawyer for um, NEA staff here in the United States. You probably know what NEA is. So I talked to my local lawyer for that, like our one that's for our district and like other surrounding districts. And he was very nice about it all. He told me like I should probably talk to my superintendent first and everything. So I did. And I just told him, you know, um, I'm just going to let you know that I'm going to be resigning from my position. Um, he was super nice about it. He was like, I get it, you need change, you know, that's the way things go. You've been in this for quite a while, and you know. And once that part was done, I was also having the guilt too. I had all the guilt with leaving the classroom, like I'm letting people down, and then also knowing that I had to resign and find out ultimately what's gonna happen to me. Like, am I going to have to pay fines? Am I going to lose my teaching license? Like, that was all things that I, there was so much uncertainty to that whole part. And so I went ahead and that's, I talked to him first. Then the next day I went ahead and dropped off my resignation letter because he said, well, we'll need that for the board meeting that's coming up. Lucky enough, they pushed the board meeting back a week. So I was able to get um, information very quickly. So after that point, so it was like, I turned in, I, I turned in my resignation letter. The following Tuesday, um, they had the meeting and they went into a private session and it was me and another employee that was resigning um, but they were like not a, not in the classroom type position. They were more of like, um, what do they call them? Classified staff. And so they had that, um, they had an executive meeting, then they come back and they vote and they voted to just go ahead and accept our resignations. And that was it. So I was very fortunate and I'm very fortunate to have the people that I have for support. Um, and this whole situation, it, it was hard. And this was a very hard decision. So I, I, I wanted to get on here and kind of explain all this just because I know there's going to be some negative Nellies coming along stating how I I was wrong and for everything I did, blah, blah. But really, ultimately, I was taking care of myself. I needed to take care of my mental health. It was getting to the point. It was getting scary. It was just so much anxiety, so much. Like I said, I was depressed. I was having um, panic attacks and everything. So... I hope you guys understand that, like, it's nothing to do with the fact that, like, I, let me rephrase all this, um, and I, like I said, I went through the whole guilt phase, and I was still feeling guilty for quite a while after I even, like, officially resigned. Um, I still had a lot of guilt. And, but everybody that I, in my district, everything has been super supportive of it all. So it's like, I really had nothing to worry about, but it's so uncertain, you have no idea what's going to happen, so... Anyway, um, I just wanted to get on here and kind of share that with you guys. So, yes, I'm out of the classroom now. Um, I'm hoping that this is going to be the right route I'm going. It, I have to take the leap and I have to do it. So, I hope you guys understand. Um, but So, there will be changes. Um, you'll probably let more videos of me working as a train manager, possibly. And um, kind of on my life, my updates on my life type thing. That's about it. That's all it's going to be. So, it's going to be very lifestyle. <laughs> Can't do anything more about that. So anyways, so I hope you guys liked what you saw. If you give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click the little bell notification to get notified every single time I post. Follow me on my social media listed down below. And until next time, please don't forget to always be you. Bye.